are two fishes of an eternal existence. And these two fishes have always battled. They, one's a great warrior and one's a great philosopher. Two completely opposite ideas. And two different completely opposite ideas is that one is yin, which is the, the sun or the reflection of the sun off the trees and the buildings. And the second one is the shadow underneath the trees and underneath the buildings. And they have always fought for eternity. They have always fought because they didn't like each other. They were so opposite. One was a geek or a nerd and one was the jock. Two completely different social statuses. One always got millions of likes on social media. The other one didn't really care about social media. Maybe at one point they tried to, but they never really got that many likes and they quit. Either way, they didn't they were not popular and they eventually became enlightened and didn't like uh, social media at all and just became their authentic self while the other one became better and better at it. They started a business whether whether it's selling uh, sports clothes or snapbacks or whatever they became very very enlightened in their own business and trade later in life while the other one went away and started becoming a book author or a video game developer and more artistic means and didn't really care after publication of their popularity. But these two eternal fishes are so completely different and endlessly different that they could never see eye to eye. And then the sun rose and they could actually see each other. And they saw each other perfectly in the new golden era, if you wish to call it a golden era. They began to see each other, and like two different cats that are uh, they're not co-aligned with their sense, that don't understand each other, they will fight, they will fight, they will fight. But once you get the two cats or the two fish together, metaphorically, they will start to begin to understand each other and build a chemical balance. And they will become friends and allies and less like enemies. Because this is a higher understanding of two different sides of the same coin. One is the shadow, one is the light. One is the geek, one's the jock, one's professional, one's artistic or normal. Um, but they will eventually, eventually learn to stop fighting. And since the beginning of time, they were in the eternal skies, and one was in, in the ground, and they didn't understand each other or like each other, but eventually there will be an understanding to be grown and nurtured for the years to come. So that peace is inevitable. There will be scales on that fish that grow some form of its own intelligence or has minions or followers of each fish, right? Who will bicker back and forth even though in the eternal realm and in the eternity of all life they are on a mutual understanding. The followers will not understand this and eventually light will continue to grow until they understand that even though they are complete opposites they will grow in union. They will grow in eternal understanding. And they will no longer be opposites. But it will become the age of Aquarius. Where you pour one jug into the eternal ocean. And then you will understand. Even in media. Most specifically Star Wars. Um, you will understand that the Jedi and Sith are both just kind of like uh, mini-groups or substandard groups created from the original Jedi Order and the original Jedi texts. 
that said, there is peace through balance, but emotion brings harmony, if that makes any sense. And there will be this conjoining. It might take a while, even though the followers of the fish might fight each other and create disharmony, eventually it will all become harmonious. And eventually the disharmony will be recognized and sought out and removed from public appeal and eventually peace will come eventually. And John Lennon's biggest idea was imagine. And people just should imagine that it doesn't matter what side you are in heaven or hell, um, whether or not the fish is satanic or it's godlike, whether or not it's Buddha or the dark forces that fought him under the tree for three days. Eventually there will be an understanding as in all duality will be assimilated into an eternal oneness. And these is what this is what happening is happening to the fish. The two eternal fish eternally right now are becoming just that. The one fish. One fish is completely golden. It is golden like Pony Boy from the Outsiders. <clears throat> fully, fully with a good future, with the strength in his eyes, and with eternal power. And then the other fish, the misunderstood fish, can be as misunderstood as you can get. Is not any other color. He's not any color. He's just the darkest color on the, the color spectrum. It's black. He may have perfect eyes, but he never opens them. He's misunderstood. He always hides. He has all the potential, but his anxiety mixed with the most bizarre interests completely muddle it up. And that is how it is. He is exotic to the core and highly, highly eccentric. But most of all, he is completely, and I mean completely, misunderstood by any, every form of medium, any form of understanding, any form of anything. He is always the most exotic with the, even the darkest or most evil or whatever. It's just bizarre. Whatever he's into is bizarre. And nobody understands him because he is beyond any form of the, uh, other people's understanding. And he doesn't match with the rest of the herd mentality. But he has extreme potential. And that will never change. He has the most potential that any other fish has seen. He could even put the golden fish to shame if he just had the will to remove his anxiety and completely open his eyes so everybody can see the most beautiful hues his eyes are made out of and it might not even be just pitch black because as soon as you shine light on it you oh you see an entire star cluster you see the purple the blue the dark blue it's omnipresent or anything omnipresent and nobody would have seen it because it's head held in the shadow. He hides himself in the shadow with anxiety and everything misunderstood. But eventually people will see how beautiful that can be. And eventually people will actually start seeing this and they'll start coming around a little bit and come around a little bit more and then a little bit more until Everybody sees it. But there are many things golden about that golden goldfish. Many, many different things. But the biggest thing is that it smiles. The goldfish is always smiling. And you should always know this too. Because it's Pony Boy Syndrome. They have a golden future and a golden past and golden of what's everything to come kind of like Pony Boy you know his uh, 
friend t says, stay golden, pony boy. What does that truly mean to you when someone says, stay golden, pony boy? I bet it means the world to these people. And they will always have golden things to come. But what's most important is that you always have to get the go golden pony boy, the goldfish, with the night fish. The golden fish with the fish of the stars, or the dark fish, or the pitch black fish, the misunderstood fish. Because they will soon understand their differences to make their similarities stronger. And there will be a form of balance. And that is what it's always going to be about. Is that there's a real balance. And they understand the difference. They always kind of discern and fully understand the rooted similarities and differences, kind of like a pie chart. It's very simple to understand. And the similarities start co-aligning and their differences start co-aligning in different ways. Is because those are two different fish. And there's a story to tell since the beginning of time of the night sky and the sun sky or the daytime daylight and it's just really similar in structure to the old beliefs of what comes during the day and what comes during the night darkness always comes with the monsters for the daylight to champion that's always kind of the difference and that's sort of what the thing is and what it really is is that there's always the story of daylight conquering monsters well eventually you'll figure out that your own monster is your own shadow and you're really blaming everything on some shadow figure that comes from yourself and of course the shadow is weightless so you're only going to blame yourself every time you blame something that's evil you're blaming yourself you're always going to negate your problems and your internal problems for something. For some reason, you're always going to negate your problems and say, Oh, well, that's my culture's evil, you know? Like in America, that'd be the devil. In, uh, in, the, in the Outback East, it would be... It would be Krumpus, and he would kidnap you or kidnap your kids. It, because, you know, that's your evil. And we're in the Haitian islands, well, the voodoo, you know? Like, the evil spirits of voodoo, well, technically on some plane of existence, the voodoo loas hide within your shadow. And through your shadow, they'll hide in your chakras, they'll hide in everything. Or vice versa. And they will be the, they will spark your internal problems as a form of healing process. And you will begin to understand that there's an, an insane process. And it kind of goes back to the, to the two eternal fish of Sky and the dusk from Dusk Till Dawn. You know, one's a vampiric or werewolf-like entity in the shadows hiding and of course you're never going to understand it and on their side they're never going to understand the daylight and what makes the daylight tick so there is a form of communication and resolvement within these two uh, different very different opposing forces and we are still comparing them to fish and the goldfish is you know it's pure light it's the golden course but the dark fish might like you stuff but might convince other people that they're geniuses eventually of course the black fish hides in pure darkness where you understand where all creation comes to be before the big bang and the creation of the universe everything was in pitch darkness 
until a small little light came around. And then, you know, boom. Boom, baby! Back in the light. Back into the light of solar of the sun, which is the eternal golden fish. The golden fish you see in the advertisements, smiling. Smackers, crack, gold fish. <clears throat> no, but seriously though, there's always a time for divine light to match your internal shadow, even if your internal shadow is a beast. And if your internal shadow is a beast, it's good to get into the philosophy of Carl Jung, for example, because he thought the human animal that we have created a philosophical system to hide our own internal darkness in human animal. And that's always go good to get into if you think you are internally, your shadow, a beast, in a sense. But no, without the eternal shadow, there can never be eternal light. It's all of the system of one. And it's all one, and all of creation is one. How can you do and say everything you say in life without saying, well, fuck it, all things are one. If, you know, all things are one, there's always some darkness to match the light, and in the other side of the, you know, metaphysically, if there's darkness that you're not aware of, vice versa. And people enshrouded with darkness never really see the light until they are able to master both yin and yang. And there's always, and you know, the entire idea of human conflict is that it started with the dawn of man. If you've never seen 2001 A Space Odyssey, what did the first ape do when he created his first weapon, when he found his first weapon? It's always been like that. Humans have always been a system of war. But eventually, through hypothetical thought and wishful thinking, that will never, that will eventually not be the case. People can live peacefully. The two fish are forever eternal. They will be here until the end of time. And once you realize that these two fish are eternal opposites, then truly, all life is fine. And then you, you will go in and understand the duality of both these fishes. Because the fish are in an eternal playground. And this eternal playground is called Planet Earth. And once you understand that, then you will understand quite a bit. You will understand quite a bit. And the eternal playground is what we all think is the universe or the connections to the universe and universal flow and that is what we understand as the eternal playground and these two fish they're going to buddy up oh, oh yes they are going to buddy up and take on the universe and that my friend is where I will be leaving.